quite a new head. Hey, boy. Yes, sir? Did you find Tracy yet? No, sir, he's still out. When you find Mr. Tracy, would you ask him if he would condescend to want to take a little repertorial chore for me this afternoon? If you don't mind. Oh, no, sir, I don't mind. Don't stand there like an imbecile, round him up. Yes, sir. Well, they're here, Mr. Boswick. Who's here? The students. What are they doing here? Mr. Boswick, don't you remember? It was a promotion tie-up to increase circulation. And what did I promise them? Well, they were to work for you for three days as real reporters. And the one who submits the best story during that time was to receive $50. And, and a gold medal. Oh, I might have guessed it. I don't know why I let you talk me into these things. Last week you had the place filled with a lot of champion potato pickers. And now the place is going to be overcrowded with a lot of crazy cubs. I won't see them. Mr. Bostwick, they're right beside you. Oh, uh, Mr. Bostwick, these are the young people you've been so anxious to meet. Miss Nancy Drew from the Brinwood School for Young Ladies. I'm very pleased. Hiya. Miss Phyllis Kimball of... Oh, hiya, hiya, hiya. Oh, Mr. Bosworth, are we really going to have real assignments just like real reporters? What's I don't want that. Can I cover a scandal? Girls, boys. Mr. Bosworth, uh, won't you say a few words to the contestants? Yeah, very few. Why anyone is simple-minded enough to want to work on a newspaper, I've never been able to find out. Why, Mr. Bostwick, journalism is a very noble and glorious career. With all the adventure and romance and everything, I should think you just love it. I do love it. I love every minute of it. I love my employees, too. Here, take one. All right. I won't look. What'd you get? I've got to write a story about a squirrel in the park. Where's the mayor live? Why? I gotta find out how many babies he kissed last week. A human interest story about a goldfish. Ladies Amateur Poetry Club. Cozy Nook Tea Room, 1 p.m. All right, now, come on, get going. All right, children, come on, come on. And if it isn't news, you needn't bother coming back. Clever idea, isn't it? We'll go into that later. Mr. Bostwick, I don't believe you take us seriously. My dear Miss Hoosier, in regard to your supposition, I see you're not without perspicacity. I still haven't been able to find Mr. Tracy. Every time I depend upon a reporter, I'm double-crossed. Oh, all right, leave a memo on his desk. Tell him to hurry over to the courthouse right away. They're holding an inquest on that Lambert woman. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the school school children. Are you satisfied with your assignment, Miss Drew? Oh, I think it'll do, for a start. Mm -hmm. Dr. Carey, please. Raise your right hand. You swear the Excuse testimony me. you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, out to God? I do. Dr. Carey, as autopsy surgeon, you examined the body of Kate Lambert? I did. And what did you find? That Miss Lambert's death was not caused by heart failure, as Dr. Hibbert certified. Her death was caused by a poison, sodium ferronite. What is sodium ferronite? It's a chemical used in photography. Is such a chemical easily obtained? Oh, no. Only on special order from the manufacturer. It's a new agent, not yet on the open market. In fact, only those who are well advanced in photography know anything about it. Miles Lambert. Mr. Lambert, you were the first to suspect your aunt had not met a natural death? I was. What aroused your suspicions? Well, for years, Dr. Hibbert had assured me that my aunt's heart condition was nothing to worry about. And when she died so suddenly, I was naturally very shocked and surprised. But even so, I didn't suspect anything until I happened to run across a scientific magazine in my aunt's library. There was an article in that magazine which had a great deal of significance to me in view of the circumstances. The article was about sodium ferronide, and the portions of it dealing with the chemical poisonous properties had been carefully marked in pencil. 
To whom does this magazine belong? It's addressed to Eula Denning. Did you mark this article, Miss Denning? Well, I... Uh, I must have. Why? I keep a file of all chemicals I work with, especially poisonous ones and their antidotes. Then you are interested in photography? Yes. How familiar are you with sodium paranoia? Well, I... I know something about it. Miss Denning, what was your relationship to Kate Lambert? My mother was her companion for many years. After Mother died, Miss Lambert took care of me. Isn't it true that under the terms of Miss Lambert's will, you were the sole beneficiary? Yes, but... Oh, but I didn't kill her. Why, Kate Lambert was the best friend I ever had. She put me through school, treated me as her own child. And yet you coerced her into making a will, leaving all her property to you. No. A will that was made less than a week before her death. No, I didn't do it. Someone must have taken the poison from the dark room. Mr. Garrett, if you had the chemical tint, that would prove I was innocent. How? Well, well, the murderer's fingerprints would be on it. Not if they'd been removed. But they couldn't be removed. If anyone touched that chemical, the Farrah and I would etch the prints into the metal. A search has been made for the poison container, Miss Danning. It's missing. But it must be in the house somewhere. Danning, you were the only person connected with the Lambert household with the knowledge of sodium ferronite. You were the only one who had access to Miss Lambert's room the night she died. And you were the only one who had motive to commit murder. I didn't kill her, I tell you. I didn't. I didn't kill her, I tell you. That's all. What's the verdict? The Denning girl's being held for trial. Murder. What's up, baby? Something we didn't figure on. I gotta get out there and be drawn up on a tin can. Fingerprints aren't. If the cops find it first, we're gonna be in a jam. A jam? How? Never mind how. If your Delhi isn't sent up, she'll get all that old lady's dough. Oh, I see. And if she is sent up, the money goes to Mars Lambert. Not bad. How much do you get? Oh, Lambert take care of me. Looks like I'll have to start being nice to Mr. Lambert. Don't you be nice to nobody but me, Lambie Pie. Miss, you and I just take a look around. Oh, well, maybe you better go on that side of the house, and I'll go on this one, so he can't escape. Good idea. And if you spot him, yell. I'll come a runner. Hey, what are you doing there? Why, come here, read the gas meter. That's the man, officer. He's the one who smashed my fender. Oh, a running hitter, hey? Yes, but I won't prefer charges if you pay to have it fixed. Well? Look, square it. It'll only cost me three and a half to have my fender fixed and about 50 cents for the gasoline I wasted coming out here, so here's a dollar back. All right, get along with you. Thanks a lot, officer. He had an awful lot of money for a gas meter reader. Maybe I'm in the wrong branch of the service. Did he say he was from the gas company? Yeah. 
Gee, that's kind of funny. I got it, Mr. Bostwick. All about the Lambert inquest. I was a little delayed on account of a man ran into my center, and I... So it was you, huh? You switched those assignment slips, didn't you? Well, I, I thought reporters always did things like that. At least they do in the movies. And besides, it says right in my textbook on journalism that a newspaper man or woman must stop at nothing to get news. And if she ever intends to impress the editor, she must be willing to do much more than just what the assignment calls for. So there. A thing like this would happen to me. I have it. Every word. Oh, it's sensational. I bet you 2380 you never thought I could do it. Miss Drew, the story of the Lambert inquest was on the street a half hour ago. But that's impossible. I have it right here. In... We were lucky enough to get it from the DA's office. Oh, dear. I was so sure I had a scoop and you'd have to stop the presses. Stop the presses? Or something. My dear little girlie, will you please take pity on a poor, tired old man? If another thing like this happens to me today, I'll lose my mind. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Pet. Well, how's the star reporter this morning? Don't mention it. You watch. I'll show that Mr. Bostitch or whatever his name is. I'll get a story yet. That's the spirit. Good morning, Miss Nancy. Good morning, Effie. Oh, does that look good? Effie, you're an artist. Boy, oh boy, what cuisine. Oh, shucks, Miss Nancy. <laughs> That's just plain old cereal. <laughs> Dad, I have a favor I want to ask of you. Go right ahead, darling. I'm in a very receptive mood this morning. Go right ahead. Well, Eula Denning needs a good lawyer, and I want you to defend her. No, I wouldn't want that case, Nancy. I've been reading about it, and I'm afraid the girl's guilty. There's not one bit of extenuating evidence. Just the same. I bet she didn't do it. What makes you think that? I don't know. I guess maybe it's just my woman's intuition. But she doesn't look like the type who poison anybody. Can't go by type, Nancy. One of the most charming women in history was a murderess, and she committed her crimes for far less than the Lambert estate. That's where the man with the funny ear came in. Funny ear? What are you talking about? This man sat next to me during the inquest, and afterwards got in the car with a woman and ran into my fender. Nancy, I'm going to take that car away from you if you start having accidents. But it wasn't my fault. I wasn't even in the car. That's why I followed him. I made him pay for that fender, too. Guess what, Dad? He went right out to that Lambert estate and tried to get in. Probably another reporter. Oh, I don't think so. He didn't look smart enough. He acted awfully suspicious. Well, I wouldn't concern myself about it too much. Oh, no! You want it? Well, certainly. I'm saving it for last. Oh. Goodbye, darling. Bye-bye, Dad. Will you? It's nothing to get excited over. Nothing to get excited over? How can you say a thing like that? Well, I might have been blown to bits right before my very eyes. It's just I can. Ooh. A whistle bomb. <laughs> you mean it's just a practical joke? Sure. It blows off when you press the starter. And boy, did you go into a tailspin. <laughs> Ted Nickerson, I'll bet you put that thing in there. Oh, don't be an infant. I got better things to do. Well, fine thing. It's time to be a menace to civilization. Anyone who deliberately do a trick like that ought to... Pipe down. We didn't do anything! We didn't do anything! I'm going to tell Mom, you! Look, they got a load up. They're not mine, they're killers. Killer Perkins, you grew up to be a fiend. But it was Mary's idea. It certainly was. Mary Nickerson, you ought to be ashamed of... Ted, aren't you going to speak to your sister? 
That gangster? She's out of my control. Aw, oh, you're just jealous because you didn't think of it first. Give me those. Hey, those belong to my big brother. They don't now. Now, go on. Get out of here. Before I lose control of myself, go on. Get out of here. You, you thugs. I'm in my own backyard. And don't you dare come in. Nice going, Nancy. The very idea. Just a nice, quiet morning at the Drews. Well, so long. I'll be seeing you. Where are you going? Now, where do you think I'd be going with this tennis racket? To shovel coal? I'll tell you where he's going. For ten cents. I wouldn't pay you a penny. I'm not that interested. Then what are you asking for? You'll get in the house. I'll tell you anyway. He's got a date with a beautiful girl. Oh, are you going to play tennis again with that... That woman? What do you mean, woman? She's only two years older than you are. Well, she'd rather play tennis, right? All right. But I was sort of depending on you to help me. Oh, of course, my getting the best story for the paper isn't really so important. But you know how it is. The honor and everything would be nice. Oh, gosh, Nancy, oh, it's no. all right. Go right ahead. Don't mind me. I just... Oh, by the way, I have something for you. Oh, you yeah? have? Well, what is it? Oh, it's nothing, really. Just a little birthday present. I spent the four bucks I had to fix the fender. Well, gee, Nancy, thanks. But my birthday isn't for two months yet. Is that so? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, now that you've seen it, you might as well keep it. Well, gee, thanks. I, I don't... Oh, gosh. Thanks. You're welcome. Wait a minute, Nancy. Look, I, I might postpone my tennis date if you really need me. Oh, don't bother, don't bother. I was just going down to the jail to interview Eula Denning, and uh, I wanted you to take your camera along. So far, she hasn't allowed anyone to take her picture. Well, then how do you expect me to get one? Oh, oh, I'd think of a way. Then you don't really need me. Well, reporters always take staff photographers when they're, when they're on important assignments, and besides, Dad doesn't like the idea of my going to jail alone. I'll go with you. A jail is no place for children, Mary Nickerson. Oh, let her go. Maybe they'll lock her up. I should say not. Now go on, change your clothes and wear your new hat. All right. I'll get your camera for you, Ted. Hurry now. I want to make the noon edition. And besides, maybe you'll have time to fix my fender. Duped again. No cameras. Well, you see, I... Give the lady your camera, Ted. Huh? Well... Okay. All right, over there. Well, that's that. You should have known you couldn't get a camera in this place. I did. What was in the case? I took out the camera and put it in a block of wood. I figured on something like this. Now, look, you don't expect me to take a picture in here after what she said. Of course, silly. And if they catch us, we'll stay here. Oh, stop your worry. Put your hat on. Inside? Of course. You never saw a real newspaper man without his hat on, did you? Ah, they even eat in them. Mm. No, no, not like that. It looks awful. For gosh sakes, what are you doing? You just gave it to I me. I don't know, no. Now, let me fix it. Fix it is right. Oh, you ruined it. There. Now you look like a real reporter, not a store window dummy. Yes? Miss Danny? I'm Nancy Drew of the Tribune, and this is Mr. Nickerson, my photographer. Oh, yeah. a reporter. You seem so young. I guess I better explain. We're not real reporters. I just want to win a prize in journalism, and that's why I wanted an interview. What did you say your name was? Nancy Drew. Are you related to Carson Drew, the attorney? He's her father. Oh, I see. Miss Denning, do you know a man with a funny ear? It's all sort of folded up like. No, I don't. Why do you ask? Well, there was one at the inquest, and I was wondering if he was a friend of yours. I don't know who he could be. Miss Denning, I don't think you did anything. That is, I mean, I think you're innocent. If 
it's all right with you, I'm going to ask my father to come and see you. Oh, if he only would. You see, there's... Well, there's so much evidence against me. Why, it's even worse now than it was yesterday. Did they find something else? Police checked with the manufacturers and learned the only sale of sodium fahrenheit made in this part of the country was to me. Uh-oh. Gee. Well, if you only had that tin can, the one the poison came in, you know, you told about it at the inquest yesterday. It disappeared. Someone probably stole it. I saw it just the other day when I was cleaning out the dark room. I can't understand why they didn't find it. It was... What's the matter? The tin was empty, but I didn't throw it away. I wanted to save it because the manufacturer's address was on it. Gee, think hard. Maybe you can remember what you did with it. I put some empty bottles and things in the basement in an old cupboard. That container must have been with them. Well, maybe it's still there. Yeah. You just leave it to me. And please don't tell anyone. Oh, I almost forgot. Miss Denny, may we take a picture of you? I don't mind. Hurry up, Ted. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Miss Denny. And we'll let you know what happens. A little bit to your right. It looks sad now. Hold it. Here, what's the big idea? What's going on out here? We're taking the cartel phone to Fort Temple with the Born Family Gang. I'm scray, I'm scray. Is the gentleman the prisoner? Ted, I think we'd better be leaving. Yeah. What if you can get in? It's still illegal. Not for a reporter. A reporter has the right to do things an ordinary person shouldn't. Oh, boy. Now go ahead and do just exactly as I told you. Okay. But if anything happens, don't blame me. Hello. Well? You don't want to subscribe to any magazines, do you? No. <laughs> I didn't think you did. Are you watching this place? Yep. Well, I, I guess you get kind of lonesome around here all by yourself, huh? Sometimes. I I I'm not very busy right now. If you like, I could play a little game of rummy or something. Say, that's an idea, son. Draw up a chair. Swell. Uh, Look, do you mind if I sit over there? I'm kind of superstitious. Oh, sure, sure. We ought to have something to shoot at, son. Say, uh, penny a point? A penny a... Yeah, that'll be fine. I'll keep score for you. me off of my game. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Well, you were just here at place. Maybe so. Well, 
I guess I'll have to be going. How do we stand? I'll figure it out. You got me in a fine mess. I lost my whole week's allowance to that rummy shark. Well, it was worth it. I found the tin can. Yeah? Uh -huh. and, and Ted, that man with a funny ear was there. He chased me out of the basement. Gosh, Nancy. We took an awful chance. M maybe we shouldn't have done it. We better get this tin right down to the police station and see if Captain Tweedy can find any fingerprints on it. And cats look at the time. My tennis date was at three. Oh, but this is much more important than tennis. If I pass her up this time, she'll never play with me again. But don't you want to go to the police station? You don't need me. You can tell me about it later. Goodbye. Where? Come on, get away. Right, break it up. Hi, Dick. Hello, Pat. Gee, I'm glad you're home. You are? <laughs> what are you doing up so late? You get back to sleep. Good night. Oh, but, Dad, I can't go to sleep. What's the matter? Nothing. No? Come on in. Tell me all about it. always taught me to do right, haven't you? I've tried to, Nancy. Hmm. Dad, if I believed in something I knew was right, I should always live up to it. More than that. Don't back down an inch. Supposing you made a promise that you knew was right, I bet you you'd keep it. Certainly. The person who fails to live up to his promise is a weakling. And you'd never want me to break a promise, would you? Of course not, Nancy. If you make a promise in good faith, I'd expect you to live up to it no matter what it cost you. And, and you'd help me live up to it? Certainly. What kind of a father do you think I am? Well, then, you're going to defend Eula Denning because I promised her you would. What? N not Dad. You just said you'd help me keep a promise. Nancy, you tricked me into this. You're always doing that to me. Now, I won't have... Well, all right. If you can give me any reason to believe that Eula Denning is innocent, I'll take her case. Oh, Dad! I knew you would. Well... Ted and I went out to that Lambert house this afternoon, and I sneaked in and found that tin of sodium ferrolite, the one that Miss Denning claims could have had fingerprints on it. You two went out there alone? Uh-huh. And I know it was important evidence, because that man with a funny ear chased me out of the basement. And, Dad, that's not the worst of it. When I was taking that tin down to the police, a woman stole it from me. So that proves other people are mixed up in it. You should have gone to the police in the first place. Oh, I know it. Everything's gone wrong. i failed all around. Maybe I'm just not intelligent. That's right. Dad! I mean, darling, everybody makes mistakes. Don't you see, Dad? If this Denning's convicted, it'll be my fault. Because I was foolish and lost the only evidence that could maybe save her. I'm responsible. Well, don't worry, Nancy. I'll see you and Denning first thing in the morning. Oh, Dad. Honestly, I feel ten years younger. Oh, don't be too enthusiastic. So far, there isn't a stick of evidence we could take into court. There will be if you can get hold of that man with a funny ear. You think you'd know him again if you saw him? With that ear? I'll say. It looked like one of Effie's popovers. Oh, cauliflower ear. What? I thought of cauliflower a little bit. What did you say? Well, I can't understand you, Nancy. Well, how can you expect him splashing around like a, a seal after a fish? That's no way to talk to your father. Oh, then it's knocking. Oh, why don't you take them out of here? Here, here's a towel. Oh, dear. Now I'll have to start all over again. 
I said that that man's ear looked like one of Effie's popovers. And I said it was probably a cauliflower ear. Oh. That might indicate that he was a boxer or a wrestler. Really? But what connection such a man could have with this case is more than I can see. Yet I felt all along that that man with a funny ear was a clue. I think you ought to do something about him. I'm going to do something about a girl with a funny face. Come on, baby, you're going to bed. Oh, Dad, put me down. I'm no baby. You'll always be your daddy's baby. I won't be anybody's baby. Everybody loves a baby. That's why I'm in love with you. Pretty baby, oh, baby. Dad. Pretty baby. Dad, don't be so silly. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Good night, baby. Good night, baby. Good night, baby. I'm going to leave you now. Oh, Dad, we've got to talk this thing over. In the morning, the morning, the bright and early morning, the morning. Hello. I'm Nancy Drew. Charmed, I'm sure. Draw up a chair. No, thank you. I've been standing all day. Do you keep pictures of all kinds of prize fighters and people like that? You should meet some of my wife's folks. But you came to the right place, sister. I know them all personally. What's your guy look like? Oh, oh you'll know him in a minute. He has a college tower here. Here. If you recognize him, let me know. Second, Helen. How did you find me here? Hello, Ted. Hello. Oh, I get it. Where would one expect to find you these days? Ted's got a girlfriend. Ted's got a girlfriend. Quiet, small fry. She's not so pretty. I bet Ted thinks so. Look, what's on your mind? Look at this clipping I found. Hey, let me see. Soxy Anthons. Who's that? He's the man I saw at the Lambert place. He used to be a boxer, and right now he's at Maxie's Gymnasium on First Street. How do you know? Yeah, how do you know? Well, I just asked myself where I'd go if I were a prize fighter and decided it would be to a gymnasium. So I called up all the places in town and pretended I was Mr. Anson's girlfriend. And pretty soon I found out he was at Maxie's. Then I hung up. Yeah. Well, it was nice of you to tell me about it. I... I gotta get back. Goodbye, Bye, Big Shot. Well, certainly, I don't want to keep you. I just thought I'd let you know where I'll be in case Dad asks you. You're not going down to that gym alone. Of course I am. Something has to be done about Soxy right away. He's important evidence. So you came over here to tell me about it, so I'll get in a jam with your father for letting you go there. I did no such thing. You're not responsible for me. We'll go with you, Nancy. We did slump fights, don't we, killer? I hope to kiss a pole cat. You two will not go. Why not? Why? Never mind. Oh, darn it, Nancy. Now you got me worried. Maybe I better go along. Oh, I don't think you ought to, Ted. It's a pretty tough place. I can take care of myself and you, too. Well, if you insist. Here. What's this? Your costume. You pose as another boxer by the name of One Round Lugan. Gain Soxy's confidence, and who knows, maybe he'll incriminate himself. Say, you had this all figured out, didn't you? Why, Ted Nickerson, I did not. like to know if she's got any bridge work. How old that, huh? Do you remember? Captain Tweedy always said, Cherchez la femme, find the woman. Very smart thing he ever did say. Yeah, and he stole that. But it's true. You can always get information from women. They just love to talk. Yeah, I've noticed that. Go ahead now. I'll wait out here for you. Gosh, she, 
He doesn't look very friendly, does he? Remember, you're one round Lugan. Wait a minute. What's the name? One round Luger. All right, check. You look as strong as you can run. I a champ. I ain't no champ. Well, you sure train like one. I'm kind of new around this break. Uh, but I've been putting the boys on a canvas up in Frisco. Yeah? That'll be enough for that. Say, didn't I see you at a nice looking dame the other night? What's your name? Oh, one round Luger. I'll bet that baby. One round Luger. Never heard of you. Well, uh, I ain't very well known around here yet. Yeah, how about spawning a few rounds? That'll get you some attention. Oh, I ain't gonna do any training today. If you're a fighter, you're in training all the time. Well, well, I, I didn't bring my clothes. It's all right. I'll get you some. Hey, Jake. Yeah. Take the cap a pair of trunks. He's gonna show me how to do things out in Trisco. Oh, sure. Well, come on. But I'd really rather not. Warm up a little bit. A little. I'm an awful mess. Well, I just learned something that might be an important clue. Come on, I want to go. So do I. But I can't. I gotta fight him. Fight him? Oh, Ted, you mustn't. I'll get mobbed or something if I don't. Oh, dear. Oh, well, look, maybe he's out of condition. Yeah. Like an ox. Okay, one round. Let's go. Ready, Jake? All set. Well, goodbye, Nancy. Now, folks, we're going to have a little excitement. Three-round boxing exhibition between Soxie Anthons of Chicago, who we all know. And one-round Lugan, the Frisco Flag. All right, boys, go to your corners and come out fighting. Why, what an on Your bum's untied. Here, let me fix it for you. Huh? Nancy, you're a genius. Now, if I can only tag you. Ted, speak to me. Speak to me. Ted, what happened? 
That's what I was just about to ask you. Try 352449. Gee, I wonder what they're doing. I don't know, killer. Maybe they're both insane. Hello. This is Soxie Anthons. Is my girlfriend there? So. Dear, there's only one more we can call, and that just has to be it. If you got the rest of them right. Oh, I'm sure I have. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Look at me, I'm ruined. I won't even dare show up for my tennis lessons now. Tennis lessons? Ted, is that girl you've been playing with a tennis teacher? Sure, it's Helen Winfield, the champ. Those lessons cost me 150 a copy. Tennis teacher? Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, I'm sorry about your lessons, but... Hey, what's the matter with you? Mm, nothing, nothing. Now, try that other number, 352440. Maybe you ought to be psychoanalyzed. Oh, I'm going home and get me a cookie. Get me one, too. I'm going to stay here and find out what it's all about. Okay, pal. Room clerk, Beldenburg Hotel. This is Mr. Satsy Anthons. I... I'm calling my girlfriend. Well, she isn't here just now, Mr. Anthons. It's the place. How will I get her name? Be strategic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know where Miss Fultz went? No, I don't, but I'll see if she left a message in your box. Soxie lives there, too. Really? No, there's no message, Mr. Anthons. Shall I tell her you called? For just a moment. Oh, Joe, did Miss Lucas take your cab? Yeah, why? Her name's Lucas. Yeah. You went to the Mandarin Cafe, Mr. Anthons. Mandarin well, thank you very... Uh, thank you very much. Mandarin Cafe. Have you any money? Well, not to brag about. Neither have I. Don't eat too much. <coughs> oh, boy, a Chinese place. Mary Nickerson. We just love Chinese places, don't we, killer? Yeah. For Christ's sakes, where did you hoodlums come from? Thought you'd get away from us, didn't you? Yeah. You're going home. We are not. We might get lost. We're going with you. Over my dead body. Mine, too. Well, I guess I'll just have to call up Nancy's father, then. Oh, all right, all right. I suppose we'll have to do it. But on one condition, when the waiter takes your order, you say, I'm not hungry. But I am. How about you, killer? I'm stuck. We haven't enough money. Are you going to cooperate with us or not? How about it, killer? Sure, we'll play ball. OK, let's go. Wait a minute. Let's just try this once. Now, I'm the waiter. What do you have, Tess? Tatsui. No, oh, no. Look, we're broke. We can't buy you any food. Hey, would you settle for a glass of milk? Well, we might go that far. OK, it's a deal. Ted, why do you have to have a sister? Ask Ma. Oh, I, I'm afraid this is a little too close to the orchestra. This will be fine. Thank you very much. Ted, did you see? She's right in the next booth. It's Miles Lambert. She is? It's fun. But something's funny. I'm positive that's Soxie's girl, and yet she's stepping out with Mr. Lambert. Do you suppose Soxie knows Lambert? Then be out. What for? Never mind. Never mind that. Is Jim. Soxie! Hello? Mr. Anson's, this is a friend. Would you be interested in knowing that Miss Lucas is dining with Miles Lambert at the Mandarin Cafe? Who's talking? Miss Lucas, and was he mad? Suffering cats. We may learn something important. 
When he gets here, something's sure to happen. Yeah. Probably a tall one. For your order, please. Oh, uh, I'll have some egg foo young. And you? Uh, just tea. And you too, please? Glass of milk. And chopped suey. Yes, yes. Down. You've been planning to run out on me ever since you found out Lambert is moving in on that old lady's dough. Shut up, Foxy. As for you, wise guy, if you want this dame, she's yours. But the minute you and her try a break, you're gonna get a surprise. I still got the tin can with fingerprints on it. I don't know what to do with it. Why don't you? nearest relative, Miles Lambert. Why do you ask? Well, I was just wondering. Thanks, Deb. Come on, Ted. Hurry up. Give me some dough. I'm short. Oh, I have. 65 cent more, please. Look, mister, that's all we got. Maybe you'll trust us, huh? Oh, sure, sure. You nice people. I trust you. Oh, oh thank you very much. Come on, Ted. We've got to hurry. 65 cents. But you just said you trust us. You see, mister, we gotta go home and get the money from our folks. <laughs> but we'll come back. Sixty-five cents. Now look what you got us into. We don't know nothing about it, do we, Keller? No, they invited us. Look, mister, we haven't got sixty-five cents. Cut check? No sixty-five cents? Yeah, no. that's right. Winger, ducker! Huh? Sing nice American song. No good, washy dishy. Come on, quick. What do they sing? Anything. Little Bo Peep. Oh, 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 dear. We'll be in for life after this. Hey, mister, can't you hook her out? Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep, but she knows just where to Open the ring and 
choose one in while we all gaily laugh and sing. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. <laughs> We're all present. Now, here's the $50 and the medal. And now, if Mr. Bostwick has chosen the best news story submitted by our charming... Give the prize to this one. About the humane worker who invented a nutcracker for toothless squirrel. That's me. I won. I won. It is with great... Unless Miss Drew has a better story. Oh, I have a story, Mr. Bostwick, but uh, it's very confidential. You see, my father... Well, what is it? Shh. Fact is, Mr. Bostwick, some strange man called my father and said he has a missing tin of sodium ferronite. With fingerprints on it that would prove you were dead and he's innocent. Show us the real murderer of Kate Lambert. Is this true? Why, Mr. Bostwick, you know my father's reputation and I wouldn't tell a lie. bringing the tin to my father's office this evening. Terrific. It's Charlie. Stop the presses. You're wonderful, Miss Drew. Hold page one for replay. Had a story yet? Hey, rewrite. Don't stand there like a half-wit. Give her the money. She won. Congratulations. And now, Miss Drew, I take great pleasure in presenting you the check and the medal. Oh, well, let's give the check to the others. I'll just take the medal. Come on, Ted. We're in a hurry. Entrance. That story isn't true. Must be true. It's printed in the paper. Nancy just made it up. But the printed for it isn't true. That's the trouble with the newspapers these days. Well, it wasn't their fault. I made the editor think the story was on the level. Why? Oh, dear. Sergeant Entrance, are you sure Captain Tweedy won't be back? Sure, I'm sure. He's in Chicago on a radio interview on how to avoid crime. He's done it, all right. Just the same. I'll bet he'd understand. Yeah. What's Captain Tweedy got that I haven't got? Well, well for, for one, one thing... thing Look, Sergeant, I put that story in the paper so the police could trap the real murderer of Kate Lambert. Well, that's different. How? Don't you see? That paper will be on the street any minute. And if Lambert is really the murderer, he'll go to Soxie's room after that tin can the minute he reads the story. He'll think Soxie's going to double-cross him or something. Miss Drew, I'm sort of influenced to think you've got something. Of course I have. Now, all you have to do is be at Soxie's place when Lambert arrives and arrest them both with the evidence. Where's this guy Soxie lives? Room 815, Beldenburg Hotel. We'll go along and help you identify them. Oh, you kids can't come along. Oh, but I've got to go along. I want to get an eyewitness news story about how you handle the case. When they read what I write, you'll probably be promoted. Yeah? I see what you mean. All right, you kids got to promise to keep out of trouble. Oh, sure, we, we promise. promise. This is Sergeant Entwistle. Send up a couple of squad cars. Oh, hey. no, you mustn't do that. If those men see police around, they'll run away. Or at least get rid of that tin. Yes, I see what you mean. All right, I'll go alone. Catch them single-handed. That'll be much better, but uh, if they even see you, then... Uh... Oh, don't worry about that. They'll never know me. I'll wear that disguise I wore in the Cullen case. Here it is, Sergeant. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Oh, careful! 
Madam of Medicine. Clumsy. Good evening, young man. Good evening, madam. Will you register, Arthur? Huh? Oh, oh sure. Grandma. Grandmother would like the same room she had the last time she was here. What was it, Grandma? Why, let's see. My memory ain't what it used to be. Was it uh, 815? Well, 815 is occupied, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Plopper, but I can give you the one right next to it. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yes, sir. That'll have to do. Uh, you see, I have to be up high on the count of my asthma. I see. Show Mrs. Plopper to 817. Uh, come, children. Why don't they make these doors bigger? Come for Arthur. Yes, sir. Else, madam? No, thanks. Here you are. Thank you. Get those bags open. Did I tell you about my disguise? Out here, Sergeant. Okay. Did I fool them? Did I fool them? Anything happens, I'll give you the signal. Right. Let me do that, will you, Nancy? Yeah. What's your name? Why, my name's Mrs. Proper. <laughs> I, uh, 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 help, help, help! Get the wagon, send them off, help! Gosh. Oh, do something! Come oh. on. Got that phone. No, we weren't doing anything. Our honest, we weren't. No, no, we, we were merely trying to... Shut up. Come on, get up, you. Sergeant Entwistle. 
Gosh, I don't know. We've got to get out. Yeah, I know. Ah, oh, it's no use, Nancy. Well, let's yell. Yeah, together. Help! Help! Somebody help! help! See, I hope they got machine guns in this picture. So do I. Say, look. Nancy's car. Let's look the air out of the tires. We ought to do something. Say, I just remembered. Them all on. Oh, boy. Help oh, somebody. There's not a chance, Nancy. Not a chance. With hundreds of people right under our feet, there must be some way out. What's that? Oh, it's just a fuse box. Say, those are the fuses to the electric sign. If we turn that off, we'll get some attention. Well, they wouldn't notice it for hours, maybe. And by that time, it'll be too late. Bells and Wait a minute. I've got an idea. There. That ought to create a sensation. And this will help. Look. Get the engineer to fix it right away. Still hanging onto that tin can, aren't you? Sure. I guess I have to prove you killed the old dame. I don't trust you. You'll get your dough as soon as they convict you, Lieutenant. If I were going to double cross you, you don't think I'd tie up the law here, do you? Where'd he come from? He was looking for that tin can. Say, this is a frame.
about. That's him. That's the man that poisoned the Lambert woman. And here's the proof. Hi, Dad. Nancy, how many times have I told you not? Sergeant, how dare you allow my daughter to run? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.